What's up, YouTube? So today we're going to do a demonstration of how to configure ALM with um, uh, secure uh, connectivity, so SSL, for example. Um, I get this question a lot, and there is documentation on the knowledge base articles and throughout uh, the support site, but um, in my opinion, it's very... Uh, some some of it's out of date, uh, and also some of it is just difficult to follow. So I thought I'd put a video together to show step by step um, one method of of doing this. Now, um, this will really depend on the specifics of your security requirements. Okay, so um, so just keep it with a grain of salt, but at least this will give you some of the information that you might need. So. Uh, so as you can see here, we've got ALM running, and it's running on the standard port 8080. And we want to change it to use uh, HTTPS over, of course, port 8443. Uh, so so what, how do we do that? So the first step is, of course, to uh, get a certificate. And the second thing is to uh, you know convert that certificate to uh, Java key store format. Um, and then after that, then you can configure... ALM to use that certificate. So I'm going to show you those steps here. Um, this is not a production environment, so some of the stuff will be different in yours, I'm sure. Anyway, the first thing to do is to get the certificate. So here I've created a self-signed certificate on this machine. Okay, so it's really uh, uh, very basic. Um, of course, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, certificates, and I'm not an expert either. Uh, you know, talk to your IT department, uh, uh, request a certificate, explain what it's for, and they'll get you the right one. Anyway, so if I have a certificate, the first thing I want to do is I want to export it so I can bring it into the Java Key Store format that uh, ALM's application server uses. That's the key. So here we have a certificate uh, for our machine, and what we're going to do is we're going to export that. Okay, and so you go through the export wizard from the uh, MMC console, and uh, we're going to choose to yes to export the private key. PFX format is fine, and then we're going to give it a password. We'll call that password, I don't know, YouTube2021, YouTube2021. Okay, so, uh, and we're going to give it a name and a location. So we're going to save it to the search directory, and I'll just call this ALM demo um, like that. Okay, looks like there was one there before, but we'll replace that. So, okay, um, actually, yeah, it should be fine. ALM demo PFX. Okay, and export was successful, and that's all we need to do here. So let's take a look at what we've created. So we've created um, in the search directory, this is a file from before. It's not the one we, uh, we just uh, created. This is the one we just created, okay? So now this, uh, what we need to do is we need to convert this to a Java key store format because that's what ALM is going to use. It doesn't use the PFX format. So to do that, we use a tool that comes with Java called Key Tool. And the syntax is, um, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of options, as, as, as you might expect. Um, but uh, let's see, let's change, uh, uh, let's change the settings layout-wise. Let's add more, a few more characters here. Uh, that's a buffer size. 100 characters should be good. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so first thing you want to do is make sure you have the key tool program on your uh, machine. So the easiest way to do that is just to type in the command key tool, and it should come back with um, this uh, result. Uh, that is, it's it found the tool, and it's asking for additional parameters. Okay, so now uh, this is where it gets uh, interesting because uh, the, the, the way you create the, the key store will vary depending on, again, what you need to set up, but this is an example that you might be able to start with. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, uh, create a new key store, but we're going to import the PFX file and save it as into a new key store that we're going to create. Okay, so that's the 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 
the method uh, we're going to do here. So we're going to type in key tool, and the commands here uh, import key store, and then source key store. And the uh, file name will be uh, almdemo.pfx because we're in this same directory. pfx and then uh, dest uh, key store. We'll just call it almdemo.jks and then dest store type JKS in caps. Uh, that just tells it what formats to create. And I'm also going to add another one that I often add. I don't need it on this one, but I'm just going to add it anyways. I'm going to call it Trust CA Certs. Okay, so it's going to prompt you from passwords. Okay, so first password is asks it's asking you is a destination key store password. So um, this could be anything uh, if you want. So you can make it the same as your your original uh, key store, but this is the JKS uh, key store password. So um, we'll just use the same thing, YouTube 2021. Enter it again. Oops. Okay, let's try it again. Destination key store password, YouTube 2021. Okay, and now it's going to ask you for the source key store password where we created it or entered it in when we were doing the export. So I'm going to type that in and it should work. And okay, so basically it's going to, uh, I should have probably put an alias for it, but it said it's, it's successfully imported, one entry is imported. And it's going to give me a warning uh, because the JKS is a proprietary uh, format. So they recommend you to, to migrate to a different one. Nevertheless, for ALM, this is all we need to do. And so what we've just done, we've created a key store in uh, Java key store format. So now that we have a key store, okay, now we can add it to ALM's configuration and, and start it up. So, uh, so what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to stop ALM. Uh, I mean, you, you don't have to do it uh, this way. I mean, you could uh, stop and restart it after you finish the configuration. But since this is just a test server, I can just stop ALM uh, myself uh, as I'm making these changes. So I'm going to just stop uh, ALM here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the configuration files that are necessary for completing this work. I don't need this uh, other dialog here. I'll keep this up over here because I'm going to eventually start uh, ALM again. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the config files for the Jetty server <clears throat> uh, for for ALM. So uh, again, depending on how you have uh, ALM deployed, it could be in different places. But basically here under Program Data, Microfocus, ALM, under the server directory, uh, you're going to have uh, your Jetty information here, okay? So there's a couple of files here that you're going to uh, be editing. Uh, one is the uh, start, okay? So right now, uh, the um, you're going to uh, in, uh, uncomment these two lines, okay? So those are the two files that will have the parameters that we're changing or setting. Okay, so now that we've saved it, that's one down. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the Jetty SSL. And I'm going to open this with Notepad. Okay, so here is where we replace uh, the information with the, the information from our key store. Now, if you recall, uh, so I called mine ALM demo.jks, okay? Uh, what we want to do here um, is there's already a key store here. It's just the, the, the blank one that comes with um, with ALM. I'm just going to rename it to keystore.org for original, okay? And then I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy or, uh, yeah, copy this here. And I'm going to rename it to, to key, just key store. So effectively replacing the key store. It's going to give me this warning. That's fine. 
Okay, so that's the the file. I could have kept it ALM demo JKS, but you'll see uh, here's where the uh, why I did it that way. So, um, <clears throat> so the key store path is set to comp key store. So I didn't really want to change that there. I just kept the same name. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, the only thing we need to do is we need to change the passwords here. Okay, now right now I'm going to type the password in clear text. Okay, uh, the way the password was for the key store. Okay, but what you're going to do after you've got this all working is you're going you're going to uh, obfuscate, uh, meaning scramble. Uh, this so that uh, it's not visible in clear text, or at least it's visible in clear text, but it's it, you know no one can can figure out what it is. So that's uh, that's um, so for now it's good for testing because I can make sure that the password is correct and everything comes up correctly. Um, down below here you've got uh, some uh, settings which uh, may need configuration. So. <clears throat> um, I think right now I'm just going to uh, there's a there's uh, cipher suites that are excluded and protocols that are excluded. So you may find that uh, uh, let's say if your organization is using TLS 1.1, uh, like an older version, for example, then you're not going you're going to want to include that or remove that from the exclude list. So um, right now I'll just leave it like that. I'm not going to mess with it right now until I have a reason to change it. Um, and that's basically all I need to do at this point. So, uh, so step one was to edit the start.ini. Step two, uh, edit the jetty.ssl. Okay, and there's that's basically this section up here that you're uh, editing. And it's also a good idea. And I didn't do I didn't do that here. It probably is a good idea to uh, to back up your file before you make a change. Uh, so, but I'm going to save it as is and trust that I've done everything correctly. And the third file was jetty.htps. Okay, and if I open with this notepad, you can see the com uh, content in here. So this is basically the uh, uh, 1.1, looks like the HTTP uh, version we're using, the port 8443, okay, so that's the port we're using, uh, and it should be all set to go. Now there is another uh, configuration file you'll you'll be uh, changing after this is all done, and and working, and that is to redirect um, the HTTP requests over to HTTPS to port 8443. Uh, but that's usually done after you've got this working. So now that we've done all this. Um, we should be in a position to start up uh, ALM and make sure that works now. So uh, we're going to do that next. Now, what I'd like to do before I start up um, ALM is I look. I like to uh, you know uh, save the wrapper. Okay, get, rename it so that uh, you know the when it starts up, it creates a new uh, log file. Uh, that's just my personal preference, but anyway. So uh, I'm going to hit start, and now I'm going to monitor the log file as it's starting up. So you can see that uh, as it's start up, it's created a new wrapper file, so it's uh, it's a little bit easier, going to be easier to track, especially if there's they get very large. So anyway, this is still starting up. There's not going to be a whole lot of information in there. I'm just going to go into it just to show you. So this is all the startup uh, information that happens. Okay. So some a lot of this stuff is just diagnostics, not really important. But what we're a, uh, looking for at the very bottom is, um, you know, once once it gets going, we're, we we want to make sure it goes through cleanly to to the server ready uh, stage, and also that it loads up the um, SSL configuration that we had. Uh, uh, configured for it, so um, so this may take only another minute to uh, to to complete. But uh, depending on the uh, speed of your server, this is a test machine; doesn't have very much horsepower to it, so it might uh, take another uh, minute or so to do. So, like I said, this process itself is not terribly difficult once you get familiar with it. But there are different variations to all this, like um, 
uh, let's say that your client wants to not use 8443, but use standard 443. Or let's say they have got other security uh, um, settings in, in mind for their certificates. You know, th those can sort of deviate from what I'm showing you here, but uh, the, the basic principle is the same. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the, uh, the process for obfuscating the password. You can look that up online or in the documentation. Maybe I'll do a, a separate demo on that because it's a little bit involved. But, um, but yeah, so now it uh, should be almost through. Let's see where we're at. Okay. Uh, it's down to the bottom. There we go. Okay, server is ready. And you can see here that it uh, loaded up. Um, our key store file. Okay. So now we should be able to um, use our browser. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, refresh your browser and just make sure the old URL is still working. And it should still work because we haven't tampered with port 8080. Okay. So I'm just going to circle it and we get port 8080. That's just a sanity check to make sure that. Uh, you know, uh, ALM is responsive. Now, oops, ALM demo 8443. So there we go. See that there's something off, <laughs> off base here. I'm going to do a corp.local. That's my fully qualified. Oh, I know why. Sorry, that's my mistake. I should have HTTPS. Okay, it's working, thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay, so uh, let's see. We, we got a certificate error. So A, we are using a certificate, but let's see what the information says. So, um, okay, so there's a problem this with the site certificate. I'm going to continue anyway. Um, it's probably because I'm using self-signed certificate, so um, it shouldn't be a problem here. It's uh, We'll see what the error is. So anyway, you can see here we are configured for port 443. There is a certificate error, and that's basically because uh, it, it, there was a mismatched address. I bet you if I did the fully qualified name that matched the certificate, I would probably get... There we go. See, so the fully qualified name is just fine. Um, I was just using the short name, and that wasn't that wasn't set up in the certificate in the first place. So anyway, um, this should give you an idea of how to how to get that um, configuration in place. Like I said, this is um, just the first step. Once you have this working, then the next thing to do is to obfuscate the password. In other words, scramble it. And there's a certain Java utility that you can run to do that. Um, and so that's a st second step, and again, test it to make sure. And then the third step is to redirect the regular traffic, 8080, to port 8443, so that nobody can go in through the non-SSL or non-HTTPS protocol. Um, so I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Like I said, it's um, there is documentation in the knowledge base um, and in the ALM Secure Guide, but I find that it's... Um, it's not specific. It's not step by step, and that can throw off a lot of people, especially if, if you know you're not familiar with all these terms and concepts. So, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and um, if you have any feedback, uh, just enter them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and have yourself a great day.